former wrestling champion Ernst Abplanalp never misses a contest. This is where I've been sitting for the last 15 years. Since 1934, I've only missed two contests. I've attended every single festival apart from those two. I can see everything from here and it's easy to follow what's happening in all four rings. It's important to know something about the wrestlers, to know their tactics and how strong or weak they are. Then, when you're watching one of them, you can sense what he's trying to do. It's not just a question of strength, technique is important too. The festival is only four days away, and Grandpa Ernst is confident of victory. His club will be putting up some fine young wrestlers. My name is Freit, and I'm a carpenter. My name is Ade, I'm a carpenter and farmer. I'm Gregor, and I install sanitary equipment. My name's Thomas, I'm a car mechanic. Whether they're woodcutters, farmers, carpenters or builders, they all have one thing in common, a love of wrestling. To attain the highest possible level, they've adopted the latest training techniques. 20-year-old Thomas Fluke will be competing in the Brunig Festival for the first time. The Brunig tournament is by far the best in the region. The atmosphere and crowd are very different from the other wrestling contests. It's held in an open-air arena in the form of an amphitheater, so the spectators are close to the action. If all goes well, I should win two or three of the elimination bouts, and I think that if I fight well, I'll manage a few additional points and be able to go on to the next round. You've got to keep your eye on the scoreboard. Meringen, a small town at the foot of the Brunig Pass, is the wrestler's holy of holies. The Alpen region, in the center of Switzerland, is an area of stunning natural beauty. Its glaciers are the source of two major European rivers, the Rhone and the Rhine. The people of the region have always tilled the land, its hard-working farmers are strong and well-built, so it's not surprising that wrestling plays an important part in the local folklore. Here, in the heart of the mountains, at an altitude of 1,200 meters, is where the talents of these rugged sportsmen can be seen. Before they can roll around in the wood shavings, the rings must be raked and rolled down. Hans Niederberger is in charge of the work. The festival is held here in the Brunig Pass, which overlaps the canton of Bern and central Switzerland. And this is where the first formal contest took place. They were put on to entertain the locals and, of course, to decide who was the best fighter. The first organized tournament dates back to 1893. In the early years, most of the wrestlers were farmers' sons, but things have changed, and today they come from a wide range of occupations. Over the last week, some 15 people have been working every evening to prepare the site. Tomorrow, around 100 volunteers will be here to man the ticket booths, to act as referees, and to generally help in the organization. Tomorrow will mark the 110th Alpine Wrestling Festival. Thomas Fluch is one of the region's 115 wrestlers. In the farm where he lives, the tension is mounting. In accordance with tradition, he will represent the strength of the village in which he was born, a weighty responsibility. Everybody here knows me. 
It's a small village, and everyone's a specialist here. The Fluff family has been wrestling for several generations. Thomas's father, Hans, gives his son plenty of moral support. On Sunday, you'll be going to the Brunig Festival. That's where you'll see some real wrestling. It's pretty tough for wrestlers like my son, who's still only a fairly average fighter. The standards are extremely high in the festival. You've got to be really very good to win. It's not easy. Switzerland's top wrestlers will be there. It's going to be tough. I could do pretty well, or I could do really badly. He doesn't need fatherly advice. He's old enough to know what he's doing. But I'll say it again, in wrestling, each individual is responsible for himself. That's certainly how it was in my time. Brunig gives you an opportunity to learn how to fend for yourself. All the bigwigs of the region attend the Brunig Festival. It's a bit like the Wimbledon finals. In the Bern cantons, there have always been contests to demonstrate physical strength and dexterity. Many of the wrestlers practice stone throwing, a rare skill that calls for a tremendous strength. Abel Strobel trains every day with a stone weighing 40 kilos. Stone throwing is virtually unknown outside the mountain regions. It's a discipline that originated in the Alps when the shepherds would amuse themselves by throwing large stones as far as possible. I wrestled for 17 years and I took part in 10 Brunig tournaments. Quite a few of the wrestlers take up stone throwing at the end of their career. As they get older, the men lose their speed, but not their strength. To stay faithful to tradition, they become stone throwers. It's a sport that's closely connected with wrestling. The special stone used in the contests is only brought out once every nine years. Dated 1804, this magnificent stone has a rich history and is safeguarded in an Interlaken bank. A constant source of dispute between rivaling cantons who want it for themselves, it has been stolen several times. Even though most of the wrestlers have bull-like necks, they still work hard to make them stronger. Matthias Glaner is a well-known champion and Brunig title holder. I already hold eight titles, including the one I won at Brunig last year. It's a major festival and a particularly important test for me as it enables me to see what my level is before the Luzern Federal Cup, which takes place next month. The Brunig Festival is also important for me because this is where I live. My reputation's at stake, so a Brunig title means a great deal to me. As a wrestler, Matthias is perpetuating family tradition. His brother is only 14 and he's already hoping to win a novice's title. <laughs> Today, the last Sunday of July, people are arriving by bus, car and mountain train for the big event. Since 1800, the Swiss have always enjoyed taking this old steam train to reach the Alpine slopes. And it has been chugging its way up to the summit of Mount Rothorn since 1892. Over the clatter of the train, the driver, Piotr, a former wrestler, explains that at Brunig, even though there are several favorites, it is impossible to predict who will win. Today, Piotr will be staying up in the mountains to attend the festival. Everyone is up at dawn. 
and at six o'clock the spectators are already flooding into the arena. Many former champions take part in the tournaments. Peter Weissenflu was an outstanding wrestler. He's never taken away the Brunig title, but he won fame in the 1960s by winning the Federal Cup three times in a row, thus holding the title of champion wrestler for nine years. There are four wrestling tournaments in the mountains. Brunig is the most important of them and attracts capacity crowds, 6,400 enthusiasts from all four corners of the country. Tickets for Brunig are reserved several years in advance. Look at that, the grandstand's already full. These people are from Bern and those over there are from the four cantons. Yes, it's better like that. If they weren't separated, they'd get stuck into each other. Blow in the Thomas! Thank you, Thomas! Best old Christian! At 8 a.m., the first wrestlers take their places in the rings. Traditional alpine wrestling can only be seen in Switzerland. Four fights take place simultaneously in rings measuring 10 meters in diameter. The contests are always friendly and last six long minutes, the maximum time for a bout. There are no weight limits and the wrestlers are classified according to the number of points scored over six fights. Rule number one, whether standing or on the ground, the wrestlers must always maintain a grip on the opponent's shorts. The shorts are made from thick linen, a material which is strong wearing but soft to the touch. In order to avoid intentional or involuntary falls outside the ring, the round is brought to an end if one of the wrestlers leaves the ring. The contestants gain points according to a rather complex system. Hans Niederberger explains. A wrestler wins when he brings his opponent down on his back or when he pins down both the opponent's shoulders. The winner scores 10 points. In the case of a draw, Either wrestler can score up to a maximum of nine points if they've both put up a good fight. If they don't put up a good fight, the score is brought down to eight and three quarter points. The spectators yell out advice. Grab his legs. Hold on to him. Wake up. At Brunig, the wrestlers are more like accomplices than adversaries, and the fighting is never aggressive. Jeder Schwinger hier oben muss einen, mindestens einen Kranz haben. 
To participate in a tournament, a wrestler must have won at least one previous match. The men dressed in white are competition fighters who enter other national contests or who practice sports such as high jumping, weightlifting or running. Those in blue or in standard dress take part in wrestling tournaments only. In the morning sun, the smell of the wood shavings permeates the area. The tournament is in full swing, and Thomas appears to be getting the better of his opponent. He battles hard in order to qualify. It's not going too badly. I won the first match and lost the second. I'll have to do better than that in this afternoon's round. At least I scored well in the placings. Matthias has already won several fights and he is certain to qualify for the following round. It's the midday break and time for sausages and coffee laced with schnapps. Small groups of yodelers are spontaneously formed among the spectators. The majority of the men say they practice alpine wrestling for the love of sport and the convivial atmosphere of the tournaments. Grandpa Ernst was once a famous wrestler who was eight times Brunig champion. He's very strong, a lot stronger than me. <laughs> but in fact, I lost my first fights. And so I said to myself, things have got to change. And they did. As I the first time I Brunig won, ha! I'll never forget my first win at Brunig. Here I'm in the ring with Peter Fuchs. I didn't beat him every time, but he didn't always win either. He typifies what a good wrestler should be, sturdily built and a good companion. I once fought him ten times on the same day. That was when I won the Brunig Championship. I was 19, and that was the first time I had my photo in a newspaper. Alpine wrestling originated in Emmental and Oberland a good hundred years ago. There was no radio or television in those days, so to amuse themselves, they made wrestling a popular sport. And it's good to know that the tradition hasn't been lost. In the harsh mountain environment, it is instinct that drives men to demonstrate their strength. The cattle fight to decide the leader of the herd. The men fight to decide the champion wrestler. Wrestling teaches you about life. It's not only a sport, it's also a discipline that molds character. You have to constantly maintain your dignity and learn to be a good loser. I'm convinced that it's an extremely important tradition that gives meaning and richness to life. After a one-hour break, the next round gets underway. Thomas is one of the 50 wrestlers hoping to qualify for the finals. But Thomas is outmatched and will not be going on to the finals, in which only the top wrestlers will battle it out. Good. 
I was fortunate enough to win the Brunig tournament three times. I've got a fair understanding of my son's qualities, so I'm not too surprised that he was beaten in two out of the three fights. His opponents were really good. This year he was up against the Stau champion. But I'm happy because I know that he did his best and that's what counts. I was inconsistent today and pretty unsatisfied with my efforts. I was up against some top-level wrestlers and I had problems in all three fights. And it was hot today, really hot. Due to the number of points he has gained over the different rounds, Matthias is now well positioned in the placings for the finals. If he fights well, he will gain precious additional points. He must win his bout in order to gain the 10 points he needs to place him in sixth position. After each round, the wrestlers take a break to get their breath back and relax. In Switzerland, the Alpenhorn is a national symbol. Hans Hobele is an Alpenhorn maker in the town of Gestad. It takes him approximately 100 hours to make one of these instruments. In the Schweiz, is this Alpenhorn. The Swiss have been making Alpenhorns for over 400 years. The horns are fashioned from the trunks of the twisted pines that grow on the slopes. The trunk, which gives the instrument its shape, is cut in two, scraped out, then reassembled. In the old days, these horns were the alpine telephone, a means of communication which, according to the particular sound played on the instrument, was used by the shepherds to stay in touch with their families or to ask for help, such as the services of a veterinarian. A few last moments of relaxation before the four finalists enter the rings. The day is drawing to a close, and the last fights begin. Each canton cheers on its favorite wrestler. It's impossible to describe the perfect wrestler. He must be hefty and extremely strong, but he must also be fast and agile. It is not sufficient just to be strong. A top-level wrestler must be an all-round athlete who trains regularly and totally masters the techniques of the sport. Well used to exerting their strength in their daily works, the finalists summon up all their reserves to fight three successive bouts. Every point is precious. In Switzerland, these wrestlers and spectators are perpetuating the mountain wrestling tradition. The Alpine Festival is a vital part of this tradition, and we can be sure that many more fights will be won and lost here in the Brunig Pass.